There's a buzzword that tech, crypto, and venture capital types have become infatuated with lately. Conversations are now peppered with it, and you're not serious about the future until you add it to your Twitter bio, Web 3.0. It's an umbrella term for disparate ideas all pointing in the direction of eliminating the big middlemen on the internet. In this new era, navigating the web no longer means lobbing onto the likes of Facebook, Google, or Twitter. Think of it this way, the nascent days of the internet in the 1990s were Web 1.0. The web was seen as a way to democratize access to information, but there were great ways of navigating it beyond going to your friend's GeoCities page. It was pretty disorganized and overwhelming. Then came Web 2.0 starting in the mid-2000s. Platforms like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Twitter emerged to bring order to the internet by making it easy to connect and transact online. Critics say over time those companies amassed too much power. So what is Web 3.0? How will Web 3.0 benefit you? And what does Web 3.0 mean for the future? Hello everyone and welcome back to the Metaverse Economy channel. Today, I am going to teach everything there is to know about Web 3.0. I will also answer all the popular questions on the topic and reveal how the concept will affect the future of the internet. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to catch more videos like this. Communication technology seems to be the fastest field to evolve. And as we have passed from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0, Naturally, we are already making a bolt towards Web 3.0. In 1993, the internet made up 1% of the global communication landscape. By 2000, it went up to 51% and more than 97% of the telecommunicated information by 2007. Nowadays, the internet stands at the core of modern civilization. It brings regular and business communication to a superior level. And as it seems, this isn't even its final form. But what exactly is Web 3.0 and how does it relate to us in the future? Truth be told, there is no absolute definition of what Web 3.0 means. Web 3.0 can be described as a cycle that has taken all the gains made by its predecessor with regard to interacting with the internet and scaled them up resulting in a more connected, intelligent, and open web. For you to understand what this means, let's go back a bit to the beginning of the internet, to Web 1.0. In the 90s internet, Web 1.0 entered the communication field as the read-only web. You could only search for websites and read them. The websites were built using static HTML pages that only had the ability to display information. At first, you would have to go through website directories. Only after 2000, you could make use of some search engines with basic functionalities. Believe it or not, the Web 1.0 era is the time when Yahoo was the MVP and Google was only dreaming of becoming the next Yahoo. Web 2.0 comes into the picture. A more interactive form of the internet started forming up at the end of the 90s. CSS wasn't a thing in the early 2000s, so developers had to write thousands of rows of PHP, HTML, MySQL, and JavaScript to customize a website a little more. However, when the first version of Flash was launched in 1996, it revolutionized website design, allowing developers to create various websites that contain complex media-like web applications, all kinds of games, videos, and images. Flash didn't provide some missing functionalities for a while, but as the devices evolved, so did the notion of acceptable load time, so it started bringing little to no value to modern browsers. As more and more designers and developers realized the benefits of web standards, HTML5 and CSS3 websites started replacing Flash-driven websites. But the appearance of Facebook in 2004 is the milestone, where the transition from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0 is quite clear, and the major platforms based on customer-generated content like Reddit in 2005, Twitter in 2006, and YouTube in 2007 that appeared afterward reinforced the read, write web forever. The web wasn't there only for businesses to show up on a website. The standard internet user received a voice. Thus, reviews and testimonials became essential for marketing purposes. Even more, since the emergence of smartphones in 2007, more and more people have got a fully functioning internet-connected device in their pockets. With the launch of the iPhone in 2007, mobile internet access drastically broadened both the user base and the usage of the web. We moved from dialing up to the internet a few hours a day at home and our desktops to an always connected state. The web browser, mobile apps, and personal notifications were now in everyone's pocket. So now in Web 2.0, we create blogs, share videos, write reviews, and make voice searches. Furthermore, we use the internet at its full capacity from a tiny mobile device as a social tool, an encyclopedia, buy and selling or as a weapon against brands. And now we move to Web 3.0. As I said earlier, Web 3.0 has not yet been implemented, so there is no solid definition. 
It took over 10 years to transition from the original web, Web 1.0, to Web 2.0, and it is expected to take just as long, if not longer, to fully implement and reshape the web with Web 3.0. However, the technologies that some people believe are going to make up and ultimately define Web 3.0 are currently being developed. Smart home appliances using wireless networks and the Internet of Things are two examples of how Web 3.0 is already impacting technology. Web 3.0 or Semantic Web combines the virtues of Web 1.0 and 2.0 by adding machine intelligence. In 1999, Burns Lee came with the concept of a semantic web, which should be capable of analyzing all the data on the Internet allowing the machines to handle many tasks without human intervention. However, the Web 3.0 denomination appeared for the first time in 2006. The term was introduced by John Markoff of the New York Times and referred to a supposed third generation of internet-based services that collectively comprise what might be called the intelligent web. In Web 3.0, the machines get along with users in content production and in decision, making, transforming traditional supportive role of the internet infrastructure to a protagonist entity in content process generation. Generally, Web 3.0 is thought to have the following five characteristics. 1. Semantic Web Web 3.0 goes beyond focusing on keywords and numeric values so that it understands content like photo, video, or audio and more complex associations between products, locations, and specific behaviors. 2. Artificial Intelligence Artificial intelligence software is able to decrypt natural language and understand intention. It can also recognize real from fake and provide more reliable data. 3. 3D Graphics The third generation of the Internet should integrate the use of 3D graphics and VR technologies to provide results regarding real-life places, diverse products, and objects of interest. 4. Connectivity Within Web 3.0, information is more connected through semantic metadata, leveraging all the available information. 5. Ubiquity Data silos are eliminated. Every device should be connected to the network and content operable by different applications. Web 3.0 is moving the internet forward to the place where using the fingers to communicate will become a thing of the past. Instead, applications like Apple Siri that use voice recognition software are becoming the way of the future. In fact, voice recognition software is becoming the key component of Web 3.0. Siri is the perfect example of where Web 3.0 is taking computer users where their machines will be able to communicate to each other and provide users with better search results. For the longest time, Siri has been accepting very few commands that it can act upon. This includes simple tasks like reminders and directions to the local grocery store. These have been accomplished by pre-programmed algorithms in the iPhone that can only do basic searches of the internet to come up with equally basic answers based on store location. And this is if the store has a website that shows directions clearly otherwise the search results can be misleading. However, with Web 3.0, asking Siri how to build a woodshed would yield step-by-step -step instructions without having to refer to any website. Now comes the big question, are we already in Web 3.0? Short answer is not yet. Just like Apple Siri, big tech companies are already implementing software that can analyze complex data and associate diverse parameters. We are even able to go on Google Maps to street view cities from the other side of the planet. And we keep getting the feeling that the advertisers are listening to our conversation through our devices. But now that most people are accustomed to a very social and interactive web, questions of whether or not we've completely shifted to Web 3.0 have been arising for years. However, there is no reason to believe that we have left the Web 2.0 zone. Artificial intelligence research is yet to give out a product that can be used efficiently on the Internet. Currently, many applications are limited to run only on one operating system, be it iOS, Android, Windows, or others. And although VR is getting more developments, it still has a long way to go before being largely used. However, we are quite close to Web 3.0. People will have to see slow changes in the way their computers interact with other machines as Web 3.0 forces users to buy faster machines. It will be a gradual, almost insidious change that many will find themselves having already begun using Web 3.0 without even knowing it. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.